Hi guys, Audrey here. So we're working on partial fractions still. And in the last video, we saw this form AX plus B over AX squared plus B to the power of N. But what happened was this B right here ended up being zero. So we didn't really have to worry about what happened if it wasn't zero. So the question is, I mean, what happens if it's not zero? And really the answer is pray. It's not a fun problem. Um, the better answer is we actually have to do a trig sub. So let's look at an example of what this would look like in its final form. So this is a form that could show up at the end of partial fractions. And we might have something like, let's say that we ended up with an x plus 5 up there. And then maybe we'll just, for simplicity, have x squared plus 1 squared on the bottom. So in this case, this is like saying that our a would have been 1 and our b would have been five. So at this point, doing partial fractions is not useful. If I do partial fractions, I'm actually gonna end up right back where I started. There's nothing I can do to separate this any more than what I've already done. Um, with one minor exception, I can actually separate the x and the five. So we'll say x over x squared plus one squared dx plus five over x squared plus one squared dx. And now this right here, we'll call it star. We already did a similar thing in the last video. We saw that actually this is just a simple substitution because the derivative of x squared plus one is two x and I have that x in my numerator. So here we'll do our simple substitution, x squared plus one du two x dx. So I'm gonna multiply by two divide by two and end up with one half, the integral of one over u squared. And if we move that up, we can see that this is actually a known form. And so we end up with one half u to the negative one times negative one plus c, which gives me a negative one over two times x squared plus one plus a constant. So that particular part, really straightforward. So then what happens if we end up, we'll call this one heart, if we have to do heart? And the answer is that a substitution doesn't work. To make it work, I have to multiply by a 2x up here and then a 2x down there. And that doesn't work because in order to solve for x, I'd have to introduce a square root into the integral, which we know is never a good idea. That's not going to be helpful for us. So we're not gonna do that. Goodbye, two x's. So instead, we're going to recognize that that x squared plus one is kind of our arc tangent form. So what we'd be doing here is trig substitution, and we let our arc theta equal to arc tangent. In this case, our a is one, so this is just arc tangent of x. So in other words, x is equal to tangent theta and dx is equal to secant squared theta d theta. So then we'll replace everything in our integral. We have the x squared plus one squared that we need to deal with. And since we're doing trig sub, we know that that x squared plus one, we're gonna wanna use our Pythagorean identity to rewrite it. So x squared plus one is actually tangent squared of theta plus one, and tangent squared of theta plus one is equal to secant squared of theta. So now when I go and replace things in my integral, I end up with the integral of five over secant squared theta squared, and then my dx is secant squared theta d theta. And then some of those secant squared thetas cancel out, so goodbye, goodbye, and I can see that this is actually the integral of five cosine squared theta d theta. And to do the integral of five cosine squared theta, because this power is an even power, even, and it's cosine, we know that a Pythagorean identity is not gonna be useful. Instead, we have to use our half angle identity. So this becomes five, the integral of one half times one plus cosine of two theta, we're just using our double angle identity there. Sorry, not our half angle identity. And now we've turned it into known forms. So here we have five over two theta plus 
one over two sine of two theta plus a constant. And now remember here, the reason that we are dividing by that two is because the derivative of two theta is two. It's just a constant, so we have to divide by that constant. Now we're gonna have to do our trig triangle. So let's do this here, trig triangle, so that we can solve for theta and sine of two theta. But, so this is something that you guys have done on your own a little bit in the assignments, but we've never actually done it together. So we're gonna create our trig triangle. You'll see in just a second what I'm talking about. Tangent theta is equal to x, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's x over one, and then I have the square root of x squared plus one. And now I need to find sine two theta. So that's what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, the angle in my triangle there is theta. The angle in sine is two theta. So in this form, I can't actually use that trig triangle because the angle is different. So I need to remember that sine of two theta is equal to two sine theta cosine theta. And that right there will then allow me to see this in terms of trig functions whose angle is theta is the same angle that I have in my trig triangle there. So in other words, we're gonna say that this is five over two theta plus five over two, one half times two sine theta cosine theta, the twos cancel out, and this is just sine theta cosine theta. Okay, well I know that my theta is arctangent, so this is five over two arctangent of x, plus five over two sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's x over the square root of x squared plus one. And cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's one over the square root of x squared plus one. So then we have five sine theta, x over root x squared plus one. Cosine theta, one over root x squared plus one, plus a constant. Now I need to go and combine star and heart back together. So I end up up here with my final answer of do, 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 negative one over two times x squared plus one plus five over two arc tangent of x plus five x over two times x squared plus one plus c. And that's my final answer here. Oops. 5 over 2. Okay, sorry. So this is now my final answer here. So now perhaps you can understand what I was saying by when that b is not 0, these problems are crazy. Because if you think about it, this problem that we just did would be a form that shows up after you've already done a partial fractions. And so this is like saying partial fractions, you do all of that stuff. You might have also ended up with like an x plus five over x squared plus one. And then you also have this to do with trig sub at the end of your partial fractions. So when this happens, just note these problems can be really, really, really long. So also another thing that I'd like to point out is that x squared plus one squared was just like ax squared plus b. But what if it had been a trinomial? What if it had had an x term? Then we would have had to do all of this after completing the square. So you can see how these problems can get really, really crazy. Okay, so in the next video, we're just gonna like briefly remind ourselves of all of the forms that could show up at the end of partial fractions, just so that we're comfortable with how each of those things will work. Bye guys.